All right, we're back and it is Friday. And as you know, we always do our Friday financial wrap up with Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for the opportunity. It's always great to look back at the week and it's been a pretty wild week. I, I got to say your financial news is such a blessing. Continued, again, love people, love the work that you do. You do so much deep dive into what could be really a lot of complexity and you simplify it and you break it down in common language. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you for, I, 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 I enjoy it. I do it for myself and uh, it's fun to give back. So thank you. I love it. So today is August the 19th, 2022. Let's get into it. The housing market. What did you see this week? What are your thoughts, opinions? Where are we in the housing market? Well, the housing market is uh, not in a good place, right? I was at your event, which thank you again for the invitation. And I used a term housing depression, right? If you're in the housing business, if you're, if you're paid on transactions of any ilk, whether you're a mortgage broker, agent, inspector, painter, electrician, uh, the housing market is um, just not in a good place and it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Uh, so I call it a housing depression. And so let's give you some numbers just to know where we are, right? Just This isn't me just making stuff up to scare you. Uh, new home sales, down 17.4%. Existing home sales down 20%. Home starts, construction down eight. Single family housing starts down 18 and a half. Mortgage applications down 18.4%. All of these numbers are bad, Ty. And frankly, all of these numbers are going to get worse. This is what we've been talking about. Housing slowdown, transaction crash, the Fed broke housing. These are all things I've been trying to warn people about for 90 days, for six months. They're now here. Compass uh, is a publicly traded real estate company. Uh, they came out, I think, 90 days ago and had a small layoff because the market was getting soft. I'm like, you're not being aggressive enough. You're, you, you're not paying it. Your CEO is doing a bad job. Well, they just said that they are going to slash the company because they expect transactions to fall 25%. I'm like, dude, are you not paying attention? They're already down 20. They're going to go down 30, 40%. You are so far behind the curve. This is why I've talked with um, Brian Lebo out of Vegas about month of life, right? He lived through the last crisis in Vegas, which was nasty. He had to get small. He had to let the cars go. He had to do these things so he could survive. And then as we discussed at your event, and you followed me just so amazingly, this is when you get wealthy. I plan to deploy less cash and get more assets by understanding creative financing. My tool belt is incomplete. I need to understand pre-foreclosures and, and seller financing and subject to. It's going to be an amazing time, but the housing market's going to go through a depression and it will likely pull the economy into a recession. So uh, hopefully people take the warning get 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 right but are also ecstatic right it's uh the, the the best analogy i heard at your event which is talking about race car driving which i know nothing about never done it but basically these race cars are all essentially the same and in great weather it's a pretty close race but you add a little bit of moisture a little bit of rain it goes from the perfect economy it goes from the best flipping market ever to one with a little bit of rain, a little slowdown. Now you can get 15 car leads because some people can handle it and some people can't. So I think the environment that's coming up uh, is going to be amazing. You had Thatch Nguyen close out the session. He's a rock star talking about getting to 10 properties changes your life. Talking about ADUs and all of these things. He's just an amazing individual. I thought, I thought bringing the house down at the end uh, was amazing. And talk about an individual just, just does the right thing, his, his donations and creating charities for building soccer fields. It's just warms my heart. So it's, um, we're in, we're in it, right? Winter's here. The depression has started again, new home sales down 17%, existing down 20 home starts, eight single family starts, 18 down mortgage purchase eight. We're here guys. You can't, you can't argue, but you know, time to do the work, get right. Time to do the work, time for opportunity, time to get right. Thank you, Michael. I want to follow up on something because you have a saying mm -hmm. about the Fed and housing. 
What did the Fed do to housing? And let, then let's actually break that down just a little bit. Let's unpack that just a little bit for the audience. Yeah. So I, I brought up a phrase probably six, maybe nine months, nine months ago that the Fed broke housing. OK, what is what does that mean? That's cute. But what does it mean? Well, I've been watching the housing market for the better part of 30 years, and it essentially was a, a flow chart, right? You at some point, you become a first time home buyer, at least most of us. Right. You save, you scrimp, you save, you buy a home and then you live in said home for five to eight years. At some point, you then become a move up buyer, which means you sell one and you buy another. Right. That was the housing cycle for a long time. I believe the Fed inadvertently distorted, disturbed, destroyed that normal cycle because we have a we had two years where everybody and their brother bought or refied. 80% of loans on residential properties, sub four, 50% of loans, sub three and a half and 13% of loans, sub three. I've asked over a hundred people to calculate their move up purchase. And everybody has gone up at least a hundred percent, if not more, some 200%. I interviewed Lance Lambert, who is an editor for fortune magazine. And he moved from, I don't know, New York to Nashville or something. And he's like, you're so right. The Fed broke housing. I should have bought a bigger home. My wife is now pregnant. I'm like, you're going to buy bunk beds, dude. You're not going to you're not going to move. He's like, you're absolutely right. Once the baby's out of the crib, we're going to buy bunk beds. I'm like, of course you are. You're, you're not going to sign up. You're not going to sign up to, to, you know, for a double payment just for an extra bedroom. Um, so, yeah, the Fed broke housing for 40 years. The move up process worked well. And now it's broken. And what does it broken mean? It really, 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 really hurts first-time homeowners. First-time homeowners relied on other first-time homeowners moving up, right? Somebody who's going to buy my condo where I've lived for 23 years is going to be a first-time home buyer, but I'm not moving, so they don't get something. So, and oh, by the way, builders, they're not building first-time homes, and now they're not even building anything, right? The housing starts are down 18%. So it really hurts first-time home buyers, which means rents are going to keep going up. Very interesting. Very interesting times. Let's talk about yesterday and just maybe just a little sprinkle. People can go back and watch the daily news from yesterday. But I love something we haven't talked about in a while, which is affordability, the affordability index. You talked about some national numbers, mm -hmm. California numbers. And then I think you talked about San Diego specifically. Yep. You talked about Fresno, which is the market you invest in. I am also active in a little bit, not as active as you, but a little bit in Fresno with some partners in Fresno. Sure. Tell us about affordability index. Yeah. So affordability index, I got to give full credit where credit is due. Bruce Norris introduced this to me in 2005, I believe, in an event he was at in the Bay Area. Shout out Bruce Norris. Uh, sorry for the passing of your son, Aaron. He was a he was a gem. I actually interviewed Aaron on my channel a couple of times. I just really love the entire Norris family. Uh, so rest in peace, Aaron. Um, but yeah, affordability is an important thing. It's actually in my first book. Uh, affordability is basically the metric I watch for when to buy and sell, said simply. So affordability, you have to know it for your market, for your buy box, right? My buy box of Fresno, California, when affordability gets to 25, that's kind of like peak stress. Right, not not many more people will buy, and we can go back forty years and watch the numbers. Um, for San Diego, for example, maybe it's twelve. Right, every market is different, so you do you, you go, you look at your buy box. If you are a California investor, you are extremely lucky. California Association of Realtors puts out the quarterly numbers, and they're so awesome they give you history. So if you want to buy in Oakland or San Francisco, or San Diego, or Inland Empire, or Chowchilla, or wherever, Sacramento, go to car.org, type in affordability index, and you can go get the Excel spreadsheet. It's so fun to play with. So Fresno, my market again is a problem at 25. And this is a scale from zero to 100, the lower the number, the worse. So last year, everybody was screaming, how's it crash? How's it crash? How's it crash? Fresno was a 42 really affordable, no problem at all. So I'm like, keep on buying, right? It's that simple. Uh, well, we've had, uh, I don't know, $70,000 in appreciation. We've had interest rates double. 
So affordability is no longer 42. It's actually crashed to 31. So not quite 25, but we're getting really, really close. And believe me, if we got to 25, I will certainly not buy at 25. Uh, I might sell some. Uh, so this is something to watch. San Diego, uh, I do not know what it bottomed out at. It probably bottomed out at eight or nine in the last run up, uh, but it got to 12. The national average, I think, was like 41 or 39. So again, trending down. Affordability is a huge problem. But let's not forget, affordability has three variables. Most channels talk about price and rate. There's a third one called wages. Um, I believe wage inflation is uh, sticky and just getting started. Uh, I think real estate has to be flat because it just, I, I've been here before. It can't keep going up. It can't. I am not a housing bull. I would not bet on appreciation from here. That's why I buy for cash flow. It must cash flow day one. Um, yeah, so affordability is a problem and, and we need to watch out, right? The 10 year notes rising. We got the Fed probably raising rates in September, maybe November, maybe December. So rates could be higher. And if rates go much higher, a Fresno's affordability could crash. It, affordability can get worse. And um, yeah, it's definitely something to track. Very, very interesting, Michael. And thank you for that. And I want to say that again, so you can go to the California Association of Realtors website. Mm -hmm. Just Google it, right? Car affordability. Yeah, just car.org. Car yep. Yeah. Affordability index. But really, like what Michael said, one of the key takeaways of what he just said, you should know your market. Yes, know yours. Yes. Know yours. Not what's going on in Michael's, not what's going on in San Diego, unless you're in San Diego, of course. Know your market. So let's transition. Let's talk about the event, maybe some takeaways, yeah. maybe things that maybe got you excited or maybe something, an aha. I've got a couple I want to share with you. What were some of yours, Michael? Well, first and foremost, um, events like that, I've, I, people may not know this, but I used to go to 15 or 20 events a year for my career. And I don't know what else to say this. The events that I go to, it's not really about the speakers. It's the audience. And your audience wanted to be there. Now, you may hear me say that and you're like, of course they did. They paid to be there. It's not the case. It, 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 I've been to lots of events where the audience wasn't there for, to be there. They were there for the party at night. People wanted to be there. They were taking notes. They were engaged. They were asking questions. You had every speaker had time for questions. You did a breakout questions across it, like at each day. Um, the, the, the people wanted to be there. You had all different skills levels. I talked to some people that were just starting others who had been through the last crash, which is like 10 years ago. Um, so I don't know how you do it. You had people from across the country. It wasn't a, a California only event, which was really cool. Um, it wasn't all real estate. You brought somebody in with exotic cars and just sales and, and things of that nature. So, um, I thought it was fun. And then thatch brought the house down, uh, closing. So a lot of fun. I love it. I got to say that, um, absolutely. I felt like, so just to share with the audience, Michael did a cool exercise. So Michael opened up Friday morning and, uh, it was so cool. He did this thing where he said, Hey, write down all the things from last year, the things that you were successful, the things that you've done, all the kind of accomplishments and, or kind of strategies and just write all these things down. And then what did you do, Michael? <laughs> That's funny. I told him to write it all down. I gave him like two or three minutes. And then I said, put it in your left hand, ball it up into a ball and throw it in the air because it's all trash. None of that stuff's going to work. None of it matters. Last year doesn't uh, matter. What you did last year doesn't, may not, matter. doesn't matter this year. It's like what you do now. Yeah, exactly. So, that was fun. I love it. The other, the other highlight I want to share with you guys that this was super, super special. And I know a lot of people that watch were there. So thank you for being there. Michael, spot on. The, the thing I would say is that the sense of community, mm -hmm. people were there, people were sharing, people were engaged, people were supportive. It really was this magical. And I, and I shared with Adrian and Joe, like I felt so much of a sense of community where everybody wanted to be there. Everybody was generous, sharing with each other and kind with each other. I love though, Michael, and I got to say my highlight was we were in the green room, we we're in a private room and it was Thatch and Michael, I believe my buddy, Eddie Salinas was in there, maybe a couple of others. And we were all standing around like flies on a wall 
and Michael and Thatch were going back and forth and basically unsolicited Thatch was saying something that Michael said forever on this channel and on this bigger is not better. Yes. Bigger is not better. And then maybe break down, talk about a little bit about multifamily and kind of that conversation yeah. that you and Thatch were engaged in and what kind of the takeaways that you and Thatch were sharing with with the room in that yeah, private so, room. Yeah. So I won't name any names, but we were we were throwing around names of folks. But ba basically what we got to is there's been a lot of people pushing bigger is better. A lot of people have chosen to sell their name to be to raise capital but they're not finding deals. They're not managing deals. They're just a name to get money from people, which is a shame. There's a lot of people claiming to have two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 units that actually own 12 because they own a small percentage, like 1% of something because they use their name. And uh, both Thatch and I agree that that model is going to destroy people. It's kind of Warren Buffett saying, right? When the tide goes out, you see who's swimming naked. So we both said, yeah, there's this indicator. This is, these people are going to be toast. Uh, and bigger is not better. We should just focus on 30 year fixed rate residential uh, and let that stuff blow up. And then we'll pick up the pieces later. Spot on, spot on and unsolicited. I would say that Thatch echoed everything that Michael's been talking about buying single family, buying fixed rate interest, you know, all of that. And then maybe adding improvements, doing ADUs, having a strategy for that. That was the theme between what Michael shared in the morning and what Thatch ended up at the end of the day um, on Friday on the last day. It came together and it was not rehearsed. No, it was wasn't rehearsed. not rehearsed, not anything other than just two guys that have clarity as to great strategy going forward. So, Michael, thank you for being there. Thank you for all that you share for folks. If you're out there, if you've not bought the book one rental at a time. Also his second book, Michael's second book, Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires. You can find them on Amazon if you have them. Give this man a five-star review. And then also you can go to onerentalatatime.com and you can buy his course. It's the best value. It's the best course out there. Michael, thank you for all that you do. Have a great weekend, brother. Thank you. Take care.